Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak, and today we're going to be talking about really the question, and that is why is there suffering? Uh, we have as our guest today, Father Jeffrey Kirby, who's written a new book, The Manual for Suffering. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know, in my, when I've written my books, I tend to be very transparent and so people tend to be transparent with me when they when we have a chance to talk with each other and I've discovered that everybody in the world is facing adversity in fact we we talk about going through the the veil of tears and I just love that scripture verse in Revelations where it says there'll be silence in heaven for the period of a half hour and God will wipe away every tear from our eyes but I think it's our calling to turn our adversity into adventure and to do that we need to have an a, a, a upward uh, yearning. We need to have hope. We need, need to be able to look up and see and help have God help make everything make sense to us. You know, my mother was uh, an angel. She was so wise and so wonderful, loved Jesus so much. And uh, about 20 years before she died, she had a tremendous medical issue and they did heroic surgery on her and uh, only 12 other surgeries like it had ever been done. And it saved her life, but it resulted, she had a stroke during the surgery and she couldn't speak for 20 years. And then in time, the issue was with her arteries, her blood flow just couldn't get to her extremities and she suffered, she suffered. She could speak, but you know, she couldn't speak more than a word or two at a time, but her radiant smile and she was still f fully wise and brilliant and, and so loving. Just, uh, you know, my dad was a Catholic deacon, but they say my mother was, was the light you know she just she was just radi radiated christ and i won't go through the whole tragedy of her last days because it was very very difficult the surgeries that she had um but i remember flying uh flying to uh to st cloud minnesota somehow that's where she she and my dad had were visiting uh in 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 the twin cities and in that area and uh they ended up uh she ended up having to go to a, a hospital in st cloud for her last days and I remember I brought many, many tuberose and plumeria lays and laid them across her bed because they loved it. They lived in Hawaii for many years. My dad was a Catholic deacon in Molokai. And my sister came in just before my mother's death and she said, why? Someday, Lord, I want you to tell me why. Why did this wonderful woman have to suffer so much? And I will just say this, that when she died, I came in early in the morning. I opened the curtains on this snowy, brutal winter day in St. Cloud and my mother and father's land that they and was had was called the Eagle's Rest it's where my dad had retreats for for Catholic uh, for for biz Christian businessmen and uh, and um, it was called the Eagle's Rest and their scripture verse the verse they love was was uh, um, he will renew your youth like the Eagles and they loved uh, Iz's rendition of wind beneath my wings that was their song and as I opened the window uh, early, early morning, just as the sun rose, was about to rise, and the rest of the family gathered around my mother. Suddenly, a bald eagle came and flew right towards her room and did this beautiful figure eight, and just within just feet of her window, and then flew away. And right then, my mother's breath changed to that breath that we know uh, was that last, her last breaths. And uh, within a few minutes, then uh, she was gone. But as she breathed her last breath, she had been in a coma for 10 days. I, don't, I can't say it or describe it, but she said, oh, oh, oh. She had seen the beatific vision, and she was on her way to heaven. And it gave me great hope. And so we have uh, with us today Father Jeffrey Kirby, who's written this beautiful book, A Manual for Suffering. I love it because it has that classic Catholic font and Catholic colors and pages and full of Catholic wisdom. 
Uh, but to ask that question, why did this good woman suffer? And, and what is our response to suffering? Father Jeffrey Kirby, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Thank you, Bear. It's good to be back on the show. Yeah, we, we'll have you back as often as you want to come. We love having <laughs> you. Know, Father Jeffrey, I, I neglected to say, uh, give your background. I know that we were talking about, you actually have a podcast now, don't you? Um, well, I have a, yes, exactly. It's the homilies. Uh, so through uh, Grace Lily, uh, which is my li the live streaming uh, service in my parish, we have, um, we have both uh, the YouTube videos and then there's a podcast version of the homilies. That's but your, right. your background is so rich, uh, Steubenville, and you spent many years in Rome. And by the way, I was just in, in North Carolina. I think you spent oh. some time in Charlotte, right? Three days yes. ago, I was suffering for Jesus. Speaking of suffering, I flew up to Erie, Pennsylvania <laughs> to give a men's, co give a men's conference. Wow. But, but, you know, we, we were talking uh, before we were on air about the, the beautiful time you spent in Rome. Mm. Well, I mean, what a privilege, but not the most natural thing for, a, for an American <laughs> to be in Rome. Right, right, right. Yeah, was just, so the, the big joke is that Rome is a great place to visit or to make a pilgrimage to. Uh, it, it sometimes is not as, as enjoyable to live in. But, um, but you know, that's, that's kind of tongue in cheek because, you know, Rome is, of course, beautiful. It's the holy places. It's, it's, it's you know, the capital of, of, of the church, the spiritual capital oh, of the yes. church. And, um, but of course, it's, it's a city, a large metropolis. It's a capital city of, of, of a secular state as well. So, mm. you know, the hustle and bustle, the difference of culture, uh, you know, for an American, especially, it can be um, wonderful opportunities for acts of humility. <laughs> well, you, <laughs> so you didn't go water skiing in the Tiber River? Right. <laughs> or anything like that? You know, I would be careful of anyone who goes into the Tiber River. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Rome is so, so beautiful. I mean, oh my goodness, to have, uh, you know, it's my favorite place to, to visit. I mean, I'm a surfer. I, it's, that's a different thing. But as far as cities to go, I'm not a city type person. But Rome, it's so bizarre because you're walking along the street and, there, you know, I just, there's ancient ruins everywhere. I just tell them, you know, you need to get some new ancient ruins. You know, <laughs> yeah. all, they'll, they'll put they'll put like these little fences, these little terrible looking fences around these priceless ruins. You know, but you yes. had such a rich experience there. Yeah, so well, it, it was a, a blessing in many respects. First of all, to to really learn a completely different culture, uh, to see you know different ways in which um, the realities of life are expressed or approached. And of course, our faith, like, you know, I was there as a seminarian under John Paul II. So, you know, be able to be there when he had large masses or when mm. there were consistories for new cardinals or canonizations. I got to attend many canonizations of, of several of our newer saints. So, yeah, just a beautiful opportunity, both, you know, just in a human experience, but also in, in, in a faith experience and, and to be trained in the priesthood for the priesthood in that type of environment was, was, was a great blessing. Were you there for St. Damien? St. Damien's, um, when St. Damien was made a saint, by chance? No, I don't Our, think, our, our Molokai yeah, saint. Yeah, I missed that one. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I'm trying to think. I was there for Josephine Baquita. And um, she's who, someone you really love, right? I, think I love, someone. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah Joe St. Josephine. And then uh, St. Josemaria Escriva was there. Oh. I was there for that. Oh, so yes. I just missed Padre Pio. I, I came the semester after he was canonized. Wow. Um, so, but yeah, some big names. That, uh, oh, St. Gianna Mola. Uh, the physician mother who who gave her life for her her children, yeah. Uh, so was there. So and you and quote her in your book, I believe, don't you? I think you quote her in your book too. I do. Yeah, her. that's right. Yes, yes. Well, the yes. toughest thing about Rome uh, that my wife faces is she's not a spoiled woman by any means, but she likes her Starbucks. And you know, <laughs> they have the greatest coffee in the world in Italy, but they don't have Starbucks. So that's, that's right. Yeah, yes, yes, <laughs> that's yes. that's really tough. Well, yeah, this, the joke in Rome is if you want Starbucks, you have to fly to London. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to go to London. <laughs> don't right. make me go to London. <laughs> you know, but uh, I, I just, I just love, I love our our time in 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 Italy. I could just because I love history, you know. And mm. and you're, li I mean, well, the first time I got to Rome was the first time I was any place where the the apostles had been, and it wow. just struck me. I mean, like, wow, they were here. You know, being an American, so far yes. distant. Well, let's 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 uh, begin our dialogue here. I know we have. Uh, uh, oh, we got to take. I think we got to take a break here in a minute. But uh, we're, we're, the conversation that we're going to have is this manual for suffering uh, by Tan Books that Father Kirby has written, and I love this book. I, I, I what I like good books. I kiss them. Do you? 
I have to mm-hmm. kiss him when I love him. I yes. love this book. And we're going to dig deeper into that question of first, why and what is the Catholic response to suffering? We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is Daniel Boone Markham with another episode of Country Up. Bullfrogs. Toledo, Washington is a logging town in the shadows of Mount St. Helens, where work is tough and men and women are tougher. My latest visit to Toledo included the annual bullfrog jumping contest during the Toledo Cheese Days. My son-in-law Don, daughter Angela, and grandkids Duke and Callie had the duty during the nights preceding the jumping contest of catching the bullfrogs. Catching bullfrogs is my daughter's favorite sport after razor clam digging. Yep, you heard it right. And she's a stunning beauty of a schoolmarm, too. Watching kids trying to goad their toads along by blowing on their rears and pounding on the ground was, well, more than amusing. For the kids, it's off the charts exciting. Later, I got thinking about this amusing scene and how it is similar to our walk with God. Figuring out God's ways is often like being bullfrogs out of water. We prefer the water, our primary habitat, but sometimes God wants us to walk, I mean hop, into his habitat, which can be unfamiliar territory. That's why we need faith. We can't see God, but he's behind us, goading us along. The breath of God's Spirit sometimes blows on us as he urges us on to his path. We sometimes feel him blowing on us, but we often stubbornly refuse to jump into the race of his life for us. I advise moving along, for he starts pounding on the ground. Of everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us and let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us. So, get off your duff and get in the race of life with God. This is Daniel LaBoon Markham at CountryUp.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. Men, are you looking for something that you can lead your sons through that will help them grow? in manly virtue our new school of manliness provides you and your sons with 36 months of audio video and written lessons that includes a full toolbox with all of our long ride home tv series all the video versions of the bear wasnick adventure radio show bears daily catechism and a year video podcast pat gervais the catholic biker daily rosary and a lot more you can lead your sons of confirmation age and above through this manly school. Go to deepadventure.com and look into Bear's new school of manliness. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to invite uh, you uh, men to go to deepadventure.com and you'll see there a landing page to join our man cave. We've had the man cave for several years now. We we, uh, have a Facebook as well as a non-Facebook community site because a lot of people don't want to have, uh, don't want to be uh, uh, on Facebook. And, uh, but we have a a community site, but we also have a three-year school of manliness now that we as men are going through together. We have three, a three-year cycle. Right now we're on the month year one month six on the the subject of self mastery and it's a great program though for for men to uh do with their sons or to do with their uh their families uh you know it's it's a curriculum it's really cool it's all cowboy based (laughs) and and uh and there's a written written uh content from me there's there's short two minute video clips from me and from others uh father bryce lundgren the cowboy priest in wyoming we have some of his excerpts from some of his homilies on those particular subjects and your kids will click off each lesson as they do them and then you'll have that time together with father and sons to talk story about it and uh so we think it's a rich thing for 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 men for us men to go together through it and then also for those men are the men to go through that with their families so go to deep adventure 
Ministry.com and check it out. We're talking with Father Jeffrey Kirby. We don't often have returning guests, but I've extended this invitation to Father Kirby to come anytime he wants to. Or sometimes he'll come whether he likes it or not, I guess, because we, we invited <laughs> him uh, for his new book, The Manual for Suffering. Father, why is there suffering in the world? Yes, yeah. So I like to begin um, answering that question by saying that the world in which we live in, so this world of suffering, uh, this is not the world that God wanted for us. And, and we can forget that. We can forget that, you know, in many respects that we have created um, by our sin uh, a completely different world than the one in which God wants for us. So we go for, to the if we go to the very beginning of salvation history, we say that when, we see that when God created uh, the heavens and the earth, when He created human nature, our human you know human beings, our first parents, that He blessed our human nature with certain gifts. So what theology calls these the preternatural gifts, as well as sanctifying grace. So sanctifying grace is just a friendship with God, a, a close familial relationship with God. So sanctifying grace, and then these preternatural gifts. Uh, imagine this: uh, we had infused knowledge. So when everyone to learn something, it was just given to us. And we didn't have to remember, we didn't have to learn. So if someone just wanted to pick up surfing, everything they needed was given. If they wanted it's, to pick up bowling, everything they needed was given. So it was, was like given. downloading Google or something. Very much, right, <laughs> exactly, exactly, you know? So, and, and, and not having to, to learn and then not having to remember. It, it, it was always there, wow. so it was some few wow. knowledge. Also, there was a harmony between our passions and our reason which means this, this battle that we are used to between wanting to do what we know is evil or not doing what we know is good, that battle didn't exist. Mm -hmm. There was harmony between the two. Our first parents actually had to work really hard to sin. They had mm -hmm. to just completely break that harmony. So there was this harmony between our passions and our reason. And then also there was a, a incorruptibility of our body. It means our bodies shared in the mortality, immortality of our souls. That means bear, we were never meant to get sick and we were never meant to die. So these preternatural gifts and sanctifying grace, that's the world that God wanted for us. But of course, our first parents believed whispered lies. They chose to disobey rather than to show gratitude. And when they fell in their first sin, not only was it a personal sin on their part, but because they were the parents of our nature, let's say like the prototypes of human mm -hmm. nature, when they fell, all of our nature, our human nature fell with it and all creation. So mm -hmm. you can imagine uh, the spiritual writers describe this as this beautiful palace that's ornate and beautiful and exquisite. And someone throws a grenade into the palace, mm. in, into the, uh, the, mm. the temple. So we imagine this temple, this beautiful temple and so on. Someone throws a grenade into it. And the wall sustained the blast, but everything inside this temple is thrown into complete chaos and discord. And, and that's what sin did to our human nature and to creation. So the beauty, mm. the orderliness, the exquisiteness of, of human nature, of our world was completely thrown off, thrown in total chaos by sin. And, and that, of course, is the original sin that we all inherit. And then, of course, we continue that, uh, that, that chaos uh, by our actual sins. So when we start to look at why is there suffering, we have to go back to the very beginning and say, you know, God did not want suffering for us. Uh, St. Paul says uh, the wages, that's the cost of sin, is death so we have chosen this and we continue this um you know, path of chaos uh, by our sin so uh, that's the beginning of an answer there's more that we want to develop but that's the beginning of an answer that you know god did not want suffering for us you know when someone dies that we love and we say it's not fair mm, that's <laughs> the question yeah it's yeah, not we're fair we're expressing an existential truth that we know in our hearts like it's not fair and it's right because we were not meant to die so we saw that, and for example, in Our Lady, who had no sin, she didn't die. She was assumed body and soul into paradise. So this, this world that we see, this fallen world, this is what we have done with the world that God has given to us. You know, and you look at the, uh, I, I can understand moral evil, but can you, um, the, the big question an atheist has, and it's interesting to me why they ask it, if God is, if there is a God, why is there suffering? It's an interesting, it's, it's the question they should ask, but what, how to, or why is there evil? Why is there Hitler? Well, what right do they, they have to even ask that uh, based on their philosophy of, of social contract or whatever? But talk about the different, you know, we have the moral uh, evil, uh, natural evil, and you talk about universal evil. Yes. Can you, this is important to, to, yes. to identify the terms and understand what, what, what we mean by, by evil, which of course is the source of suffering. 
Yes, and, I, and I'm very happy that, uh, Bear, that you're emphasizing that because I'll, I'll tell you, in, in looking at books on suffering, because, you know, before, you know, writing this manual, I looked as, you know, is a book like this already out there that, that I can encourage or promote that, you know, has someone written this? And, and reading the books that were available, uh, I found a lot of great books on suffering, but the vast majority almost exclusively addressed moral evil, which mm. is easier to explain. The abuse right. of human freedom, you know, the consequences of, of our own cho choices and decisions and so on. Uh, and, and, and that develops, that needs more development too. But, but oftentimes what happens is people are neglecting or not even addressing the question of natural evils or universal evils. Because it's easier to say the reason why, um, you know, people were, were hurt or killed or so on is because someone abused human freedom. That's easier to explain, not easy, but easier to explain mm -hmm. than why was there a tsunami who killed that has killed 250,000 people, right? With this mm -hmm. natural evil, how do we explain that? And if I can go back to just that whole summary of the beginning of creation, that when we fell, when our human nature fell from sin, we brought all creation with us. Because it's a powerful thing that as human beings, we are the crown of God's creation. So, you know, all the animals, the birds of the sea, the, the birds of the air, the, the fish of the sea, like they, they rely on us. Their relationship with God. We're, is we're their connection. That, that, that's so cool. I mean, the earth's connection to God, in a way you could say, is via us because we're heaven and earth combined. Yes. Our spiritual, rational soul that can commune with God and our physical being. And so yes. we're kind of like that. We are that connection. And so when we fall, we are to be the rulers and the stewards, as we say in Hawaii, our kuleana is to steward this earth. When we fail, we crumbled the, you know, our, the, earth, the earth and all that's in it, the universe in that sense, uh, yes. lost, lost its, uh, its preternatural, its, its, its uh, original state too. Yes, yes. And, and, and to run with that bear, the, the early fathers really were captivated by uh, that aspect of our human nature. And they even called us spiritual amphibians because yeah. we moved between the material and the spiritual and right. uh, referred to us as, as frontier beings because right. only in the human person do you find both spirit and matter. Angels don't have matter and angels don't have a spiritual soul. So we, we have this, this middle ground, this microcosm where all of creation is summarized in us. And because of that, when our human nature fell, uh, we brought creation with us. And so creation also has this discord, this chaos. That's why we have natural disasters, natural evils, because creation itself is, is off tilter. It, 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 it's, it's not where it's supposed to be. There's a disorientation that has happened because of sin in our human nature and, and, and in creation. You know, uh, and you look at the universe ontologically, it looks like from the moment of the let there be light, big bang moment, it was like an arrow shot through billions of years of time and space to come to this moment of, uh, of this human, this little earth, and this, this, this being that's heaven and earth combined. I mean, what a glorious God we have, and what a great gift he gave us, and then, and then uh, the fall. And by the way, you, you, you love to quote the early church fathers, but these books behind me, you probably recognize them all. Yeah, was, the yeah, early was, church fathers and the commentaries. Th those are the ones that brought me back to the faith, is yes. reading Stephen Ray's book on the early church fathers. We're talking with Father Jeffrey Kirby uh, about why is there suffering and then what our response should be to suffering. And where can people find you, Father? Yeah, so my website is frkirby.com and also on Twitter, uh, Father Kirby. And then, of course, the book is available through the, uh, the publisher, Tan Books. And we love Tan Books. They have such, so many great classics and, and great books like yours. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be back with more with Father Jeffrey Kirby and his book, Manual for Suffering. Aloha and welcome to a deep adventure moment. This is Bear Wozna coming to you from my home in Waikiki Beach. You know, when you paddle out in big waves, and I remember a big day surfing Rincon, it was such a big day that the pier at Ventura was basically destroyed. Boulders were being knocked about. And I paddled out and paddled out and paddled out. And then finally, it was like after 45 minutes, I couldn't get out. And then the cleanup 
set came and just drove me back towards the shore and threw me basically halfway up on the roadside of Pacific Coast Highway. There's a saying that the monks of the desert had, and that is, memore morte, remember your death. They took that from the Roman tradition when a general would go and win a great victory, they would allow him to come to Rome, leave his army north of the Rubicon, but he would come into the city of Rome and they would throw a great triumph for him and they would be acclaiming him and telling him how great he is. But just two paces behind them would be a slave or a servant saying, memore morte, memore morte. What does that mean? Remember your death, you're only mortal. The monks of the desert would live all by themselves and they would seek to go deeper with God and they would pray the Psalms. Maybe they would have a hold of one gospel that they could read, but almost all of them had a skull in their little cave. And when they got together, they may have mass or something like that. They wouldn't speak at all to each other except to say the words, memore morte, remember your death. We need to live our lives as if we're going to die. When we celebrate the feasts of the saints, we don't celebrate their, their biological birth. We celebrate their death. We celebrate their biological birth into heaven. We need to live every day remembering our death and longing for the beatific vision. This is Bear Wozniak from DeepAdventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now. Here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to love on you mama bears out there. Wherever we go and speak, the mama bears tend to circle around us and just they just love what we, we love, they love listening in as I challenge men to be, uh, to be uh, better and, and uh, more virtuous. But the reality is our ministry is for women too, but we just know if our message is gritty enough for the men, the women will already be digging on it and loving it. And so we have a place for you. We have a Facebook community for you too. You can go to deepadventure.com and check out the Mama Bears. Now there's a book here that was written specifically for my wife, Cindy, um, because she has to put up with me every day. Uh, just think about that, what a challenge that would be. You know, one of the things is I have ADHD, which I love. But other people around me, for some reason, they don't like it too much. But um, she's such a blessing to me. And so, Father, this book, Manual for Suffering, was probably written just for Cindy to learn how to de <laughs> deal, with, deal with me. Let, let's talk a little bit more about, about the why of it. The, you were t we've talked about, you know, um, by the way, I have surfed a tsunami. Believe wow. it or not. Yeah. It wasn't, wow. that, it wasn't that big of a wave, but it was very unusual. It was very unusual. Yes, I, <laughs> but uh, it, was, amazing. it was a cool thing to say. It wasn't a, a big giant wave, but it was just very, very unusual. Uh, but anyway, so so uh, we, we talked about moral suffering because God is the, one of the good things God gave us was freedom of choice. He gave that to Satan. He gave that to us. And we had the freedom to basically to choose life or to choose death. Yes. And, and mankind chose death. And then we're talking, uh, we've been talking about natural evil and why there are tsunamis and earthquakes. What about, you, you mentioned uh, universal evil. Yes, yes. And, and oftentimes this is merged into uh, moral evils, but actually our, our spiritual and moral tradition makes a distinction with, with universal evil. So those are evils that befall us, that we have no control over, um, none of our actual sins uh, contributed to them directly. Uh, so these would be, for example, war uh, or, um, you know, uh, 
nuclear holocaust, something that, that's universal in perspective that has caused massive devastation or hurt or harm that we have experienced or our loved ones have experienced, but it's, it's removed from moral evil because we're not directly involved ourselves by our actual sins. Not our, not our, yes, I see. So it's someone else's um, moral, moral choices. Perhaps. Oftentimes leadership. So right. it's really kind of highlighting to the biblical emphasis on leadership. We could talk about that forever right now in terms of the COVID situation. But I want to switch now to something, and that is, um, I was interviewed by Marcus Aubrey. He's, uh, I love his, his company, Onnit.com. They used to sponsor me, Joe Rogan, and, and one of the great snowboarders, and Marcus have this supplement company that, that especially MMA fighters love. And, I, and I, when I was training for my world titles I, I, in surfing, and I still do, I take them every day. But when he interviewed me, he's a, he's a, he was trained in classic, uh, in, in Aristotle, um, um, and, 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 and philosophy. And when I mentioned the seven theological virtues, he said, well, there's only four. And I said, well, of course, there's justice, self-mastery, fortitude, and prudence. But St. Paul in, uh, spoke to us about faith, hope, and love. I understand faith and I understand love. Hope is this, but he said, hope, you don't need hope. You need to just have, you just need to have determination, fortitude, mm. oh. and, and belief in yourself. So this unique this unique uh, virtue of hope that is that is really unique. I think it's fair to say, pretty much unique to Christians. What what do we uh, what? How does that come in to helping us deal with suffering? Yes. Yeah, yes, yes. I'm I'm very glad, Bear, that you you focus that you, uh, on that because I think that we have a real misunderstanding, a, a kind of secular or fallen understanding of hope. Uh, which, as the story you shared, it's about my self-power, my self-autonomy, my determination. But in our tradition, hope is is always our trust in God. In fact, you know, to probably understand a hope, to, to think that I am only going to rely on my determination, my self-will, my self-power, is actually uh, considered a curse. So when St. Paul is speaking Put about Pelagians. Abraham, and he says Abraham hoped against hope, in the Greek world, hope was a curse. So the famous story of Pandora's box where... You know, all the ills of humanity are unleashed, but at the end, at the bottom, there's hope. Well, as Christians, we read that and say, oh, well, well, at least they had hope. But actually, the Greek mind saw that very differently, that hope was actually the worst of all curses. Ah. Because to think that I can change something, but I am also subject to the capriciousness of, of the gods, that, you know, I, I have this false view that I can do something, but really I have no such power. So in the Greek mind, hope was a curse. So when St. Paul says, Abraham hoped against hope. He's saying that Abraham didn't accept the the, the pagan view of hope. He hoped against that because he hoped mm, in God. Hope against hope. Well, that's I've never heard that before. That's so cool. You know, I, I, I love G.K. Chesterton. I, I'm sure you've heard of the guy. Why isn't he a saint yet? I don't know. But I love <laughs> I love G.K. I used to, I, I used to have a big tin picture of him outside my uh, a, a lanai when I had an open lanai, but. Um, you know, he made the statement that the four cardinal virtues are things that are kind of restrain us, mm. but the three theological virtues you can run wild in the areas of faith and hope and love. And he made the point that you only need hope when you're in a hopeless situation. Yes. And we need to, uh, we need right now this time and what we've been going through as a whole, as, as the whole world uh, with the COVID thing. How do you, you know, I've always said fortitude is like a fullback lowering his head and trying to cross the, you know, hit hit and and get across to the touchdown if he doesn't get it he goes to the quarterback give it to me again but hope is like a wide receiver that looks up for that hail mary pass you know we look up yes Yes. tell tell us what 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 can our response to be to this this evil that we're seeing now in in the world that's manifested not only in the disease but in the uh, uh, the the authoritarian put down Mm -hmm. of human freedom that's come been visited with it yeah, yeah. So if, if we go back to the beginning of creation, when, when I was mentioning the fall and the fall of our human nature, the fall of creation, in the midst of that, uh, and probably the only reason why we didn't fall into utter despair as a, as a human race, in the midst of that, God the Father gave us a promise of, of a Savior. And it's very important that we look at that, that first promise in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, because we're told that a woman will come, her offspring will crush the head of the serpent, but the serpent will strike at his heel. Mm-hmm. Now, that's very important, Bear, because there at the very beginning, the first promise, we are told in prophecy that when the Messiah comes, the anointed Savior, he will be wounded, that he will mm. bring this salvation through suffering. Mm. So right away we see all the consequences of the fall. 
And yet, when the Messiah comes, he's going to use the very suffering, the fallenness of the world mm. to redeem us. So we can say the cause of the downfall has become the means of our salvation because he's going to use the very suffering that is the discipline as the means for salvation to, to ransom us uh, from sin. So as believers, we're called to unite ourselves, especially the baptized, to unite ourselves with the Lord Jesus. So when we see suffering and difficulty, whether it's abuse of power, whether it's corruption of our national leaders, whether it's you know our, our own struggle with, with the pandemic, whether it's having the actual uh, COVID and, and trying to um, deal with the symptoms and so on, all the above in multiple different ways and, and all the other aspects of, of human suffering, in, in Jesus Christ, we have the opportunity to offer them and unite them with him. Now, that, that just blows my mind if you think about like, who am I? Like, there's billions of people on the planet. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm one person. And, and you look at the countless and countless generations of, of human beings through the course of human history. And, and, and me, like myself, can unite myself and my sufferings with Jesus Christ, who is true God, true man, infinitely perfect, almighty, ever living. I can unite myself to him. He allows me to do this. He invites me to do this. And my suffering now has power. So what was an evil becomes a good. What was meant as a discipline now becomes a means of blessing and salvation. And, and, and so when we begin to understand that power we have, we can make the worst of situations into the greatest blessings. And we see that, don't we, in the lives of the saints. Josephine Bakita says that I mean, she was sold into slavery as, as a young girl. Like She's called Bakita. That's, that's a local jargon in the Sudan for lucky, as if she were some type of dog. Because she was taken and, and, and as, a, as a child into, into slavery so young that she can't even remember her actual birth name. And, and she mm-hmm. goes on to this horrific life of human trafficking, eventually finds liberation. But she tells us at the end of her life that if she could find the people who enslaved her, she would kneel before them and kiss their hands because she would say, what you meant for evil, God brought for good. And if you had not done what you did, I would not have known Jesus Christ. And we can see it in Maximilian Kolbe, in the, in the starvation cells of Auschwitz. We can see it in St. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Ann Seton in our own country. We can see it in Mother Teresa of Calcutta. We can see all, all of these truths reflected in the fact that evil only has the power we give it. Mm. And when we suffer, that suffering does not have to have the last word. We can mm. unite with Christ and allow it to accomplish a tremendous good. It can, you know, it's when we come back, we'll talk more about that. It's it all. It sounds almost like a heretical statement when it says we can make up for what is lacking in the sufferings of oh. Christ. I mean, you really have to understand what you can't ignore that scripture. You need to understand that because it really is true that if we're part of the body of Christ, then where was Christ's body? It was on the cross. Where, if we're part of His body, we are right there with Him, and we participate in His suffering. But we can make that a redemptive act. We're going to talk more about that in the difference for a moment, Father. When we get back, the difference between the pro, uh, some Protestant teaching that says that when Jesus was on the cross, God was punishing Him for mm-hmm. our sin, versus uh, the 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 uh, the Catholic understanding of what really happened there when he uh, when he uh, was reclaiming and recapitulating all and bringing it bringing everything new. We'll be right back with more of, with Father Jeffrey Kirby. This is the Bear Wozniak adventure. That's right. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua.
This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak. We want to invite you guys to, uh, hey, check out my new book. Um, at Sophia Institute actually republished a book that was very popular, uh, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. It just gives, it gives people traction in the, in the seven virtues. And uh, it's, it's, it, as most of my writing is, it has a lot of narrative in it, too. My first editor was Louis L'Amour's last editor, if you know the great Western writer. And he uh, saw this gift that I had of writing stories. So I talk story about some of our saints and other real uh, people that I know in that. So it's something that's, it's an easy read, but it really gives you traction. We quote the catechism, too. It's kind of like both both end, which is the Catholic way. And it's something that your young people will love, too. Uh, we're talking with Father Jeffrey Kirby. And uh, by the way, the name of the book is Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, about the manual for suffering. You know, when I, when I uh, first experienced my, this powerful conversion and experience in the Catholic Charismatic Renewal in 1973, I just, it was unbelievable. And I, well, I, I was hungry for God, searching for God. I wasn't expecting that great infusion of his love. But I was going to a Baptist university. I had many beautiful Baptist Christian friends. And because of that, my understanding of the cross kind of became that understanding that when God sent Jesus, God the Father sent Jesus to the cross, he actually looked away and was separated from his son and punished his son for our sins. And I kept thinking, that's not the feeling I have when I pray. I have this great sense of love I can't imagine God trying to eke out the punishment and especially doing that on a son. So here you are. You sin, and I'm going to condemn you to death, but don't worry. I'm going to send my son to die for you. It just didn't make sense to me, but I accepted it on faith. Um, the Catholic understanding of the cross and recapitulation yes. it makes so much sense and just gives you joy when you hear it. Can you, can you, can you draw the distinction or help us understand that? Because it has everything to do with suffering. Yes, absolutely. And so if we look at uh, Jesus Christ, of course, you know, he, he's Lord, he's, he's Savior, he's God. But we also know that he's friend, companion, older brother. And so we can imagine the prophet Isaiah as he describes his own call. And, and, and God the Father says, whom shall I send? And, and Isaiah says, send me. And, and the early fathers very much used that imagery. And as God the Father asked, whom shall I send? God the Son so, so the prophet Isaiah is almost echoing what happens between father and son, that God the Son says, here I am, send me. So the, God the Son chooses to come in, in, out of love for the Father, love for humanity to come in order to take upon himself the sins of the world. And, and we know that you know, when, when the Lord was on the cross, I, I love this, um, this sacred art that shows this, this image, a uh, um, painting that, that says, um, it's entitled The Other Pieta. And it shows it as Jesus on the cross, God the Father is embracing him. Mm. So, of course, the, the popular Pieta is Our Lady holding Jesus after the crucifixion. Mm -hmm. But this is the other Pieta. It shows God the Father very much close to the Lord, embracing him as he's on, on the cross. Oh, because what beautiful. is he doing? All right, a powerful, powerful you know, image. And, and what is he doing? He's allowing himself to become sin. And what is being disciplined, what, what's being punished is, is the sin you know, that the Son has chosen to take upon himself and an act of love. And so God the Father is, is you know, re removing this sin by the, the sacrifice of his son. Uh, the son and the father, it's, it's an act of love. So it's not- The greatest act there can be. The greatest right, act there right. can be. Father, to, yes. for Jesus to give his life, I'm not discounting that in any way. I mean, Jesus, out of an act of love, took on our sin. And, but as a father, I would rather die than have one of my sons suffer. And so God the Father was suffering too. We can't, Absolutely. we can't, uh, yeah, go ahead, I'm yeah. sorry. And, and was allowing it um, because this older brother was bringing salvation to his younger siblings. So I think of like my own father when my brother was sent to Afghanistan. Do you know, like my father allowed his son to go to war in order to defend his fellow citizens, right? And, and so on, so if we can you know, imagine God the Father is, is allowing this, the sacrifice is, is united with the Son as he makes the sacrifice so that 
you know, we can be redeemed. So the children of God by, by adoption, by these younger siblings of, of our older brother, uh, the Lord Jesus, uh, can be redeemed. So I, like yourself, Barry, I think that the whole emphasis, you know, in terms of, of love and, and, you know, sin is, is a privation. It takes away. It's, it's, it's anti-human. It's anti-reality. It takes away who we are. And the Lord Jesus is seeking to remove that so that we can once again know that we are beloved, that we are called to God the Father, we're to be with him. And I think if we understand the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus in that context, first of all, we understand the plan of salvation. Then secondly, mm -hmm. I think in terms of our own suffering, we can understand okay, God's permitting this so that now I can say, here I am, Lord, send me. I can offer up this suffering as I work out my salvation and the salvation of those around me. You know, the, the statement, I will make all things new. You know, behold, all things are new. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I think of it like this as a weight lifter. Uh, I mean, I'm not a weight lifter. I lift. I used. I lifted weights in order to be strong enough to do my to do tandem surfing. Now I sup. I stand a paddle surf, and that gives me the strength I need to do that. But I trained with a real powerful weight lifter. I mean, world champion woman, by the way. And and I just remember that feeling of of lifting the weight off the ground and then bringing it up to my chest, and then pressing it upwards. And to me, this is a, an example of Jesus when he came. He came, he lowered himself, became like us in all things except sin, uh, took on our humanity in order to restore our dignity. And so when he, when, he, when he went to the cross and his arms were extended on the cross, I think of that as a weightlifter saying, there, that's mm -hmm. where you're supposed to be. I'm restoring your dignity. But, you know, in that cosmic way that only God could do. And, the, you know, there, I think Aquinas said there's other, maybe other ways he could have done it, but he chose this way to show his supreme act of love mm -hmm. by giving his life. And he rest that, that lifting, lifting up of the suffering of the world to restore our dignity to the, to the, to the plan that God had for us. So, so yes. when we, we as Catholics, when we go to Mass, we're right there at the cross. Yes, uh, yes. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, I, I, I'm, I tell you, amen, amen, Bear. I, I think that if we don't fully understand what the Mass is, and a lot of Catholics don't, uh, regrettably, and I, I know I'm constantly trying to teach and, and preach and, 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 and direct the hearts of the baptized you know, to the Eucharistic sacrifice, because we understand what the Mass is that, that every day we can, and especially on the Lord's Day, to come as a member of the baptized, and in a powerful way, which we can do all throughout our lives, but... In, in, in a powerful way to be there uh, sacramentally with the Lord Jesus as he is representing his sacrifice to the Father. The Holy Spirit's working, Our Lady's there, and St. John's there. Like uh, I, I, That's a powerful experience and opportunity we have uh, that the Lord has given to us in, in order to be there, to, to, to know of his intimacy, his closeness, because you know we can describe a theology of suffering and we can give all the, the theological reasons and answers, and, and those are helpful. But none of that minimizes real suffering because when we're suffering, it hurts like Hades. Like, yeah. You know, and, right. and our mind's all over the place and our heart's aching and our soul yeah. shares in the suffering of our body. It doesn't want to pray. You know, yes. virtue becomes 10 times harder mm -hmm. and so on. And, and, and to just be able to go to the Eucharistic sacrifice and say, Lord, you know, I, I, this, this is my oblation. Like, <laughs> this, is, this is just where I am. I just ask that you please bless this. Like, give me your strength. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think that that's been given to us because we need it. And to find so many Catholics who don't appreciate the Mass and then don't have that power of grace, that, 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 that means of power that has been given to us, like, it, it's a great loss. I really think the devil is, is behind this type of you know, false uh, marketing in terms of the Mass. Mm -hmm. I see the Mass turned into a circus or, mm -hmm. or turned into some type of you know, horizontal um, you know, celebration of, of, of merely the community rather than the mystical body united with Christ in the representation of the sacrifice to the Father by the power of the Holy Spirit. Like, I mean, you compare wait, 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 but, 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 you but, want. But say this, and we only got a minute or so here, but I think Protestants misunderstand. I mean, I've heard it said again and again, when you have Mass, you're re-crucifying Jesus. And you, but you just word the, use the word representation, we're re-presented. That's right. Can you can it you happened once historically explain two thousand years ago? Yeah. Right. So the Lord the sacrifice of our Lord happened once historically two thousand years ago because the victim was God himself. Uh, and, and the fact that it was being offered to God the Father by the power of the Holy Spirit, that sacrifice continues. So Venerable Fulton Sheen describes it as radio waves. We can describe it in terms of the internet. Mm -hmm. The internet's always on. It's always running. 
But when I go to click on to the internet, I, I'm, I'm clicking on to it. I'm, I'm being involved. The sacrifice will continue. John saw the mm. lamb still bleeding, standing but bleeding in his revelations. Mm. So the sacrifice continues. We go to mass, we click on to, we participate in that sacrifice that is represented through the ages until the end of time. Well, God, God, I'm sorry, go ahead, Father. No, I, I just well, you know, that, God you know, is, God, Jesus' name is, I am who am, salvation, Yeshua. Uh, and in the contraction, Yahshua, uh, it's from Yahweh, I am who am, me, meaning he's God is always present everywhere at all times. Mm -hmm. And so the, the act of that cosmic moment on the cross, Jesus is, the cross is made present from past and to the future. And so the mass brings us right there, and that's what makes sense of our suffering. You know, there's a, there's a church that I go to in Florida, which I love, but the, the cross doesn't, that has Jesus ascending not nailed to the yeah. cross and yeah. uh but they put another the, the, another priest has put another they put a crucifix there now too and when i spoke in erie pennsylvania the church there i was with father larry and the church there uh -oh. has that same ascending jesus as opposed to the this the the, the 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 cross that we go to when we go to mass but they have another crucifix kind of off to the side but mm. it's the centrality of the eucharist and that summit of our faith on mount golgotha when jesus took on the biggest bully on the block defeated him mm -hmm. using his own weapon death and then and then restored us to our dignity father jeffrey kirby's book is a manual for suffering where can they find you again yeah so my website frkirby.com i'm on twitter father kirby and then the book is available through tan books love you father kirby well i'm gonna Thank grab you make hopefully you come back and see us again father kirby his book is manual for suffering until next week now you know what's about to come so close your ears father so in Hawaii, uh, aloha means to give breath. And this is what Jesus said when he gave, when he breathed his spirit upon his disciples. So we say, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Or you can do the aloha with me, Father. May the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Uh. <laughs> That's right. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out.